Color grading can be time consuming and complicated, but I tested a color grading plugin that's easy to work with and I will show you what to expect from using it. And I think the results are amazing. You can create awesome film looks using a bunch of built-in customizable presets, adding the ingredients of a cinematic movie or a vintage photo. Let's start with Premiere Pro. So the way I like to work with this plugin is to create an adjustment layer first, put it on top of the footage, and I can also rename it to color grading just to stay organized. The reason I do this is because I have these three clips underneath which are similar and I would like to apply the same color grading to all at once because it's easier. Before opening Premiere Pro, I already installed the Dehancer plugin, so I just need to open the effects panel, search for the plugin, and then drag it on the adjustment layer that I created earlier. So on the left side, when I open up Dehancer, I can see all these panels that will help me create the final look and they are arranged in a logical way. Now in this video, I do not have the time to show you every single tiny checkbox and slider from this list, but I will show you the most important ones that I actually use. And first I'm gonna open up the input. The default here for the source is Rec. 709, which is completely fine, but I also have the option to choose the camera that I used. So from this list, I will go and choose Canon R6 because the Canon R6 Mark II is not listed at this point, maybe in the future. And I will pick this one with Log3 Cinema Gamut. These are the settings that I used when I recorded these clips. And immediately after this, the image will adjust itself and Dehancer applies a base correction LUT. It has some more contrast and saturation. Also, here in the input menu, you can adjust the exposure and the temperature. And I just click on the value, hold down control, and I can use the up and down arrows to change the values here using tiny steps while also looking at the scopes. Now let's open the film section, which is like the heart and the soul of Dehancer. This one allows me to experiment with different film profiles by choosing from this huge list here. Most of them are from Fuji and Kodak, but you can also find others like Agfa and Polaroid. Every time you click on one of them, you'll see the result immediately on the preview. I think there are so many options that it's really hard to choose the best one, but if you are someone who used to shoot on film, then you probably want to choose a very specific profile from this list, and if you find it, I bet you'll be happy. I will disable this panel for now because another option to color grade is to use this section called print, which is used to simulate optical film printing just like on paper. You can choose, for example, the Fujifilm 3513 or the Kodak 2383 print films. Both look really good, as you can see, and you have some options here as well to control the exposure, the saturation, and also the contrast. And by the way, if you want to understand every single effect and option from all these panels, you can just enter dehancer.com and you will find all the manuals with very detailed explanations. So about color grading with Dehancer, you can use the film section with all those profiles separately. You can go only with the print film looks or you can use them both just like a combo and create really unique looks. So for example, I can choose the um, Kodak Era Color from here and then combine it with the Kodak 2383. Now, maybe I need to adjust the contrast here a bit, maybe lift the blacks and so on. I'm sure a lot of you are more experienced with uh, color grading so you can achieve much better results than me. But you get the idea. Now, another cool section here that simulates the film look is of course the grain. The grain, the noise, the grain. But before that, I like to show you some other interesting stuff like compression, for example. Uh, it's clear that sometimes you have to deal with blown out highlights, like in this frame, for example. I mean, I used a Canon R6 Mark II, but the dynamic range is still limited when you shoot in shade and you have very bright spots in the background, like here. So you can just enable this section and Dehancer brings down the brightness of the highlights. So if I switch to before and after, this simple effect helps to keep the interest point on the subject 
and not on some bright parts in the background. So very, very helpful. Hey, Lation, it's another section that's well built. So let's take this shot and let's zoom into 200% on this area where I have some really bright parts. When I enabled the halation, you can see this orange outline here that simulates real film looks. It appears around very bright spots and you can control this effect as well to be softer, for example, or if you think it's too powerful, you can also dial it down a bit. The bloom effect is really nice as well, to be honest. You can use it in shots like this where you have the light source in the frame and it acts like a glow effect, but it looks very natural and it adapts for every frame. Now, let's open the grain. I know you love this part because it's the most obvious thing to uh, apply on a footage to make it look like, like it was shot on film. The enhancer lets you control the amount of grain, the size of the grain, and even the opacity of the grain individually in the shadows, in the midtones, and in the highlights. And this is very important. So you can customize it however you want. It's really up to you because in the end, you are the artist behind the final look. And if you like it or your client likes it, that is all that matters. I hope the grain is visible on the screen because YouTube is usually compressing the videos so the results could be different on your screens. You also have the option to export the color grading as a LUT, very nice. But keep in mind that all the other effects like halation, bloom, or even grain will not be exported in the LUT. Only the color grading will be exported. And another useful option when you have people in the frame is the false color that helps you to nail the right exposure for the skin. And while it's enabled, you can change the exposure of the clip until the skin is correctly exposed. I think this is really useful for, uh, for this type of shots. After you made all the adjustments and you've finished your color grading, a very nice touch of this plugin is the output section, which basically allows you to change the intensity of the look that you just created, because maybe you don't need it at 100%. So you just dial it down a bit if you need to. Now, let's see, what are the cons and workarounds of dealing with this plugin in Premiere Pro. I think the first and the most important thing you need to know is that Premiere uses GPU power to render the clips in your timeline while you use Dehancer. The more effects you apply in Dehancer, like grain, halation, or bloom, the harder it will be for your computer to render those frames in real time. Actually, when you start to see this red bar here in the timeline, it means that Premiere cannot handle the real-time playback. And in this case, you'll need to create in and out points in the timeline and then go to Sequence and choose Render In and Out. After this process is finished, you'll see that the red bar turned into green and from this point you can press play and the video will play smoothly without any problems. So what I recommend if you have a big project is to disable the adjustment layer, trim your footage, make all your edits, and then in the final stage, enable the adjustment layer with the enhancer and make your final adjustments and then render out this video as a file. And also if you shoot 4K or above, I strongly recommend to create proxies, which are lower resolution playback files used in editing in Premiere Pro. And then when you render the project out as a final file, Premiere will export at the highest resolution. So before showing you how this plugin works in Photoshop, I just want you to know that I teamed up with Dehancer and I'm offering you a 10% coupon code if you decide to buy this plugin. You just have to use the code Christy at checkout exactly as it appears on the screen. So thank you so much in advance for using my coupon code. It really means a lot to me. Now in Photoshop, the way I recommend using this plugin is the following. If your image is not a smart object, then convert it to a smart object first. If you're not converting it into a smart object, you can add the same effects using the enhancer, so it works fine. But if you want to go back and modify something, a value or disable an effect or a section, something like that, because it's too intense, it's not possible. You need to restart the plugin and redo all the effects and all the adjustments. So in this case, I will right click and convert this image to a smart object. Then I go to filter, dehancer, dehancer fill. 
Right off the bat, you can already see that the Hanser has two sections here, Profiles and Presets. In the Profiles, you'll find a lot of film emulations just like in Premiere Pro. And you can also filter them using these categories here. What I like in the Photoshop version of this plugin is that I can see all these small previews here. And when I click on one of them, the Hanser applies it to my photo. So I can see a preview in real time, which is awesome. And on the right side of the screen, just like you saw in Premiere Pro, you have the same panels to tweak this film profile exactly the way you want. So maybe you don't want grain on this photo. You can just deactivate it from here and there you go. Now, when it comes to presets, this is a combination of film profiles and print film looks. So for example, you can choose the Cinestill 800T combined with the Kodak 2383 print film, which you can of course tweak however you want, like I showed you. Down in this area, you can see the histogram of your image. So everything you do, just make sure you throw an eye here as well in case the blacks or highlights are crushed without intention. You also have this preview checkbox that allows for before and after. And if you're satisfied with this image, like I am now, you can press OK. And that's it. Now that the answer was applied as a smart filter, and you can see it here. So if, for example, I make up my mind and I want to modify something, I want to, I want to go back and change some settings, I can simply double click the effect and we are back in Dehancer, exactly where we left off. Another great feature of the Dehancer plugin is that it also has an iOS app. So after you choose your photo to edit, the screen will be split in two sections. The top section becomes your image preview, which can be adjusted to be smaller or bigger. And the bottom section lets you choose presets, just like in Premiere Pro and Photoshop. The preset customization is really simple. You just have to press edit and from there you can customize anything you want, including exposure, color grading, print film emulation, grain, halation, bloom, and the list goes on. Then you export your image and you can share it with friends or on your social media accounts. I personally use this plugin every single day now for the last two or three weeks. I like the profiles, I like the presets, I like the way how I can customize everything I apply there. I also like the grain, to be honest. And if you want to check the prices for it, you can enter the Dehancer website. Depending on your budget, you can choose to get a license for three or six months, one year, or even a lifetime license for both video and photo versions. And, and the good thing is that you can receive two activation keys. Now, in my opinion, if you have the budget, the lifetime license is a good choice because you pay once and you get all the future updates. And if you apply the 10% coupon code with the code Christie, then the final price becomes much nicer, in my opinion. It's valid for all of the Hansel products except for the iOS app subscription. If you like this video, I'm sure you'll enjoy this one on the screen. Until next time, I'm Christie and thanks for watching.